In this Next.js tutorial, you will learn how to fix broken images using a fallback image. We've designed custom image components that extends the native Next image component with a fallback feature. These components come in two versions, a client component and a React server component. So let's dive in. So let's jump right in VS Code, and here, for the demonstration purposes, I've prepared a small demo project with a few dummy review cards here. The cards are rendered from a collection of review objects using map method. The problem is that if we'll take a look at how our reviews are rendered, you will notice those ugly not found images. So we need to find a way to show a fallback image if the image source is not specified or the source leads to a non-existent image file. If we scroll to the top, you will notice that in Reviews collection, I imported the images in all the possible ways, using a path string, a static import, a non-existent file, because it's misspelled, a remote image, and for the last card, the image is not specified, so it would be undefined. This will help us to test our new image components in all the possible cases. And I've actually prepared those components for you, but let's start off with the client component. Let's open it up here. This one is actually simple to implement. First, we define the use client to use React hooks and the events. We do all the necessary imports such as use state, use effect, and the image component. And then we define an interface to extend the image props with a fallback source property. And the component itself takes several props, such as source, alt tag that defaults to an empty string, and our new fallback source property. In the component body, we use error state to track whether an error occurred during image loading. And if the error occurs, the on error event fired, and sets the error to true. And when it's true, we use the fallback source instead of the original source provided. And the last, the use effect resets the error state when the source changes. And that's it for the client component. Let's go back to our page component and use our client image with fallback component instead of the original image. Hit save. And you will see that all those ugly image placeholders have been replaced by our fallback source. Looks great, isn't it? But what if you need a server component? Let's open it up in the Explorer. It is a more challenging one, but not that much. Let's break it down step by step. At the top of the component, we've not defined it the use client, because it's a React server component. Here we do all the necessary imports here. We are no longer need the React hooks, because you can't use them in server component. And here we've imported a couple of Node.js modules. And let's scroll down to the component itself. You will notice that it takes the same props as our client component version. But here it calls the getImageSource function to determine the appropriate image source. This is a new function that I've created. Let's scroll up to take a look. It accepts a source which can be a string or a static import and a fallback image. And in the body, we check if it is a statically import image, which is an object. And if so, we just return it directly. But if no source provided, we return the fallback image. But if the source is in data image string, we also return it directly. Next, for the remote images, we check the source path string, whether it starts with HTTP or with the double forward slashes. And if it is a remote image, we execute the check remote image exists function. This function uses fetch using head method to retrieve only the header information associated with our image. Essentially, it's a much faster way to check if the remote image exists compared to the full get method that downloads the entire image. And if the response is OK, it returns true. Otherwise, the fetch method will jump right into the, into the cache block return false. Finally, if the remote image exists, it returns the original source. Otherwise, we need to provide the fallback source string. 
And the last case, we check the existence of the local images in public folder. And for that, we've utilized a path join method that concatenates the path string depending on the environment where we're executing the code. And to check if the local image exists, we use a check local image exists function. This function uses access method from the file system module to check if the file is accessible, which essentially means it exists. And if the file exists, it returns true. Otherwise, the access method will throw an error, taking us to the catch block, and return false. And, like in the previous example, if the local image exists, we return the original source, otherwise the fallback image. Let's use it in our page component. Let's comment the client component and uncomment the server image component. Let's hit refresh. And you see that it works exactly the same way, but without the client side work. There are a few benefits of server side components. It handles image existence on the server, preventing unnecessary client side requests. It improves initial load performance, especially for large image sets. And it displays the fallback image immediately if the original image fails to load. Remember to choose the appropriate component based on your specific needs. As the last step, we can test our image with fallback component by implicitly leading us to an error in our images. Let's add a typo here, hit save, and you see that the image have been replaced to the fallback image. And here we can pass the correct image path, hit save, and you will see that the image have been successfully loaded here. For the remote image, we can add a typo here as well, hit save, and you will see that the remote image disappears and the fallback image has been provided immediately. But let's bring it back to the normal remote image. And here as well. And that's all for this video. If you found this tutorial helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Your support helps me to stay motivated in the long run. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.